same thing. Gail, a, a lot of parents, I know I've had fantasies about taking, the, you know, many in even road rage kind of situation. Well, you know, the circumstances you, you fantasize somebody, about doing things. When somebody hurts your child, it your evokes, parental instinct it goes, is, you go it's, nuts. It's primitive. It's yes. very primitive. And, and it's consuming. It can and, take and over. All consuming. Yeah. And because you feel helpless to help your child because it's being done by somebody else. You do, but Gail, sometimes you feel helpless against your own emotions that fill you in response to that. Well, that is what you need to work against, right? That the idea is that you're supposed to be the adult and as painful as an emotional it is, the, the, you can help your child best if you can step back and use your analytic head to say, what can I do to stop this child? I need to call the school. I need to call the parent of this child. I need to call but, law but enforcement. Debbie, you had done a lot of that. Let me go to some calls. Grace in Texas, what do you got? Um, yeah. I, hi, Dr. Julie. It's really, it's really an honor to talk to you. Pleasure, Grace. Um, I, whenever I was in school, I was bullied a lot. So I know how the my mom and how the daughter feels. But I would, my mom would have handled it differently. How old are you, Grace? Going like, hmm? How old are you now? Eighteen. Eighteen. And when were you being bullied? How old were you? I was bullied eight. To around about 11th grade. And, and you think your mom would have handled it differently? She would have handled it very differently. Not choking the child, but probably going to a teacher, probably going to the principal, probably even talking to the mother. Going to parents, yeah. I, and, I, but Deb, you had tried mm -hmm. all that, hadn't you? I had gone to the school, um, like I said, she had been bullied previously, and you know, I, I went to the SRO, I, I went to uh, that's the school resource officer. I've gone to the school. Um, they had things on video that happened to her before, and they did nothing because the schools do not want to get involved at See, all. That, you know what? You so know what? The, you I, know what? I, I, I'm really sympathetic to that. Uh, we have an epidemic. We have a major problem. Kids are killing themselves. I'm sure you're watching these reports, and that terrorizes you more. And you're right. Many schools are not stepping up and doing what they need to do. They're not educating their kids about bullying. They're not giving parents someone to talk to to really intervene. And this has to change. And slowly, it is changing. Oh, Schools I don't know. I th maybe the school, but the culture seems to be more the bullying than Jacqueline in Texas. Jacqueline. Jacqueline in Texas. Um, hello, Dr. Go right ahead. Hello, Dr. Drew. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, Jackie. I just wanted to say quick uh, about the Tim situation. I agree with that because I I'm willing to go to jail to protect my kids. Mm. But on the other hand, um, about the lady and, and the bully thing, mm. like me personally, I wouldn't have went to that length of hurting someone else's child for the simple fact because I wouldn't want no one to hurt mine. And I probably would have, like, did something like cut them out or something, but as far as actually putting my hands on them, I wouldn't have went that far. Mark Iglars, that's an interesting observation, isn't it? Is do unto others this is the golden rule, really? Absolutely. I'm not going to teach my kids that they act out in violence as a result of somebody acting out against them. The other thing is there's a difference between defending your precious offspring, which I would do, versus committing an act of retaliation right. because they've done them wrong. Right. That's yes. what both of these parents <laughs> did. And both, I asked both of them, how's that working out for you now? Right. And I mean, both would say it's not the not strongest choice. Exactly. Choice. You'd throw yourself in front of a moving train. You'd throw yourself in front of somebody who was literally attacking your child. Yes, you might do something to them. But, this, but a premeditated, I'm going to go well, even, an but not even very pre different. Well, that's the baseball bat and the bat it's, You know, store, that's a period of time. Yes, and, and, but, you know, but even I think Debbie just sort of became overcome by emotion when right, she saw this kid. Right. And uh, again, neither are okay. That's really the bottom line well, message. Uh, you know, even I'm, though we all would want to. We, listen, let's say we all would want to, right? We, we would all want to. And we all want to do lots of things, murder and mayhem. And all those fantasies True. are normal. I don't, I don't, Mark, but Mark, we Mark, don't for the record, do Mark, I don't, don't want to do murder. Them. Just for the record, Mark. <laughs> we, gave the scale solved, you know, Dr. No, no, no. Gail solved. It, I, she may need your services. I, I don't believe him. Hold I don't on. believe him. Gonna, he does sometimes want to do that. I've got to take he some just calls. doesn't do it. 3, 855 373 We're going to keep this conversation going.